Molly just showed Sweden that the age of Africans taking rubbish from Europeans is long over. When Sweden chose to wield its financial aid as a weapon against Mali, it likely did not anticipate the African nation's defiant response instead of submission. The recent escalation of tensions between France and Mali, culminating in the summoning of the French ambassador in Bamako, His Excellency Joel Mayer, by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, involved informing him of the government's decision to expel him from the country within 72 hours. Mali, once perceived to be under Sweden's influence, swiftly reciprocated by ordering Sweden's ambassador to depart within the same time frame. The shift in power dynamics raises the question, when did the oppressed become so potent? The tables have turned, signaling that Africa is evolving. Will the ambassador comply by leaving, or will Sweden resort to measures to enforce compliance? Let's delve into this unfolding narrative. The recent diplomatic rift between Mali and Sweden serves as a poignant reminder of the mounting tensions between African sovereignty and Western influence. Following Sweden's ultimatum to sever aid ties due to Mali's affiliations with Russia, the Malian government's swift response in expelling the Swedish ambassador underlines a clear rejection of external coercion. This incident transcends a mere diplomatic disagreement, it mirrors the broader struggle for African autonomy amidst persistent neocolonial pressures. For decades, African nations have grappled with Western aid dependency, often finding themselves subject to the whims of donor nations that exploit financial assistance as a tool for exerting influence. The case of Mali and Sweden epitomizes this dynamic, where Sweden, under the guise of moral authority, sought to dictate Mali's foreign policy decisions. Mali's bold stance in pushing back underscores its assertion of sovereignty and self-determination. However, the question arises, wasn't the West purportedly aiding Mali for its betterment? Why does Western aid, ostensibly intended for development, consistently come laden with conditions that disregard African sovereignty? The historical narrative of Western aid to Africa unveils a pattern of control and manipulation veiled under the guise of altruism and international cooperation. Since the dawn of independence, African nations have been ensnared in a global framework crafted to perpetuate the economic and political supremacy of their erstwhile colonizers. Reluctant to relinquish their influence, Western powers devised aid mechanisms that prioritized maintaining control over these newly emancipated states. Aid provisions seldom come devoid of strings attached, they often entail structural reforms, economic liberalization, and political realignments that primarily serve the donor's interests over the recipients. Institutions like the International Monetary Fund IMF, and the World Bank, predominantly influenced by Western agendas, have spearheaded this strategy, imposing policies that have detrimentally impacted African economies. Structural adjustment programs, for instance, have compelled African governments to slash public expenditure, privatize state-owned enterprises, and open domestic markets to foreign competition, all under the guise of enhancing economic efficiency. In reality, these policies have entrenched Western economic interests at the cost of local industries and livelihoods. In countries like Mali, such measures have led to the erosion of essential public services, the weakening of social safety nets, and the concentration of wealth among a select elite, many of whom are aligned with foreign powers. This underscores the true nature of Western aid, a mechanism of control designed to perpetuate African dependency on former colonial powers. Sweden's recent ultimatum to Mali exemplifies how Western powers persist in leveraging aid as a means to assert dominance over African nations. By threatening to sever aid due to Mali's relationship with Russia, Sweden wasn't merely airing dissatisfaction, it was attempting to steer Mali's foreign policy alignment towards Western interests. This coercive approach, using economic leverage to enforce compliance with Western geopolitical strategies, is a recurrent pattern. However, what unfolds when a nation like Mali refuses to adhere to these prescribed norms and defies the established rules of engagement? The unfolding narrative between Mali and Sweden underscores the evolving dynamics of power and agency in Africa, signaling a pivotal moment where African nations are reclaiming their autonomy and challenging the status quo of neocolonial dependencies. In this evolving saga, Mali's response marks a potent assertion of sovereignty, heralding a paradigm shift in the narrative of African self-determination and resilience against external pressures. 
Molly's bold decision to expel the Swedish ambassador stands as a resolute rejection of a prevailing dynamic, a potent statement signaling Molly's refusal to succumb to coercion or manipulation. It serves as a declaration that Mali will not allow external forces to dictate its foreign policy or compromise its sovereignty. This act of defiance resonates beyond Mali, it symbolizes a broader resistance movement across Africa against the paternalistic attitudes and neo-colonial tactics of Western powers. African nations are awakening to the realization that true sovereignty cannot coexist with dependency on foreign aid laden with conditions. Mali's symbolic gesture marks a pivotal departure from the past, a clear denunciation of the neo-colonial strategies that have perpetuated Africa's reliance on external assistance for far too long. For decades, the West has wielded financial aid as a tool to interfere in the internal affairs of recipient countries, often with detrimental outcomes. Whether through imposing forced economic liberalization or demanding political restructuring, Western ideals have frequently destabilized societies, undermined local economies, and exacerbated social disparities. The recent clash between Sweden and Mali is just one instance in a series of historical incidents reflecting these disruptive interventions. From the damaging structural adjustment programs of the 1980s to the contemporary calls for austerity measures that deepen poverty, Western aid has often inflicted more harm than good. Despite the known pitfalls, Many African nations continue to accept aid from Western countries due to the pressing need for immediate financial support to address critical issues such as poverty, infrastructure development, and healthcare. This acceptance of conditional aid is often not a matter of choice but a consequence of post-colonial underdevelopment and global economic pressures. African leaders grapple with a challenging reality where the scales are tipped heavily in favor of those controlling the purse strings. The legacy of colonialism has left African nations with weak economies, inadequate infrastructure, and limited access to global markets. Structural challenges compounded by global economic policies that disadvantage developing nations have hindered self-sustaining growth in Africa. Consequently, many governments find themselves compelled to rely on foreign aid to tackle these obstacles, despite the aid perpetuating a cycle of dependency. Conditional aid especially from Western nations, typically mandates recipient countries to align with the donor's economic and political interests, often at the expense of local industries and populations. This results in a vicious cycle where African nations become reliant on foreign aid to sustain their economies, even as the attached conditions impede their long-term development prospects. The political ramifications of accepting conditional aid are equally significant, as they can influence domestic and foreign policies, essentially perpetuating a form of neocolonialism. This cycle of dependency extends beyond mere economics, it has ingrained a psychological mindset among African leaders, equating survival with compliance. The fear of economic collapse and the looming threat of aid withdrawal have fostered an environment where sovereignty is frequently sacrificed for short-term gains. This enduring struggle represents the poignant reality faced by many African nations, torn between economic survival and true autonomy. Despite facing numerous challenges, some African leaders have been striving to break free from the cycle of dependency. Mali's recent decision to expel the Swedish ambassador and reject Sweden's conditional aid exemplifies this trend by placing sovereignty above immediate financial benefits. This bold move signifies Mali's refusal to let external donors dictate its policies, reflecting a broader sentiment in Africa that emphasizes the necessity for African nations to control their destinies, even at the cost of short-term economic struggles. To comprehend how Mali reached this pivotal point and what emboldened its leaders to stand against a powerful Western nation, it is crucial to delve into the historical and political backdrop that has shaped Mali's current government. The current administration in Mali ascended to power amidst significant political turmoil and widespread discontent with the existing state of affairs. The coup that brought about this new leadership was not merely a routine transfer of power but a rebellion against a system perceived to have long neglected the interests of the Malian populace. The previous regime, widely viewed as a puppet of Western interests, was criticized for prioritizing foreign favor over addressing domestic needs. The decision to expel the Swedish ambassador was not impulsive but a strategic move reflecting the government's commitment to upholding its newfound independence. 
Mali's defiance is not isolated but mirrors a broader regional trend across West Africa, where nations are pushing back against the enduring influence of former colonial powers. This resistance often accompanies a resurgence of nationalist sentiments and a re-evaluation of the role foreign powers should play in domestic affairs. By aligning more closely with Russia and re-evaluating its traditional Western alliances, Mali seeks to reduce its reliance on external support that comes with conditions. This shift has not gone unnoticed by the West, as evidenced by Sweden's decision to halt aid to Mali in response. However, Mali appears prepared for potential repercussions, demonstrating a resolve to maintain its sovereignty in the face of external pressures. The risks associated with Mali's decision to reject Western aid are substantial. In the short term, Mali may encounter economic and diplomatic challenges, including potential loss of financial support and diplomatic isolation. Nonetheless, the Malian government seems convinced that the long-term benefits of asserting its independence outweigh the immediate costs. By diversifying its international partnerships, Mali aims to decrease its dependency on Western aid and enhance its global bargaining power. Mali's bold stance serves as a significant moment in the broader struggle for African sovereignty in a world where power and influence are often concentrated in Western nations. Other African countries can draw valuable lessons from Mali's experience, particularly regarding the importance of strategic alliances, economic independence, and steadfast leadership in safeguarding sovereignty. The example set by Mali's leaders may inspire a new generation of African leaders to take assertive actions in defense of their nation's independence. The question remains, will nations like Mali catalyze change in Africa, and will this transformation be worthwhile? What lies ahead after such bold decisions? The future will reveal whether the West relinquishes its grip on Africa or pushes back against such defiance. Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.